got one. Yay! Little rude, you guys didn't clap for me, but okay. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Well, you guys are gonna be. How you guys all doing? All right. Yeah. Day one, Anime Riverside. That's awesome. It works. Hello, hello. All right. How was uh, how was the traffic getting down here? It was okay. It was, you know, it was not so bad. bad. Came from Studio City. I think 405, of course. Took like an hour. I was talking yeah, about the convention similar. traffic. Oh. I was like, they, they were like, it's crazy up there. And I was like, I'm good. I'm, I don't want to go do it. I'm not. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I left nice and early so that I could get here and then had an hour to set up and I still barely made it. <laughs> it be like that. Nice. It do be do. So uh, you guys know why you're here. Um, this is the Naruto get... panel? This is the Naruto <laughs> panel. <laughs> So, for those who are just joining us, this is the Jujutsu Jiu Kaisen, right? Jiu Jitsu Kaisen Q&A panel. The way this is going to work, I'm going to ask a few questions, and then I'm going to turn it over to you guys to raise your hands, and then we're going to pick somebody, and we're going to answer your question, maybe, as long as it's appropriate. Please keep it appropriate. <laughs> I have done these where I've got inappropriate questions. All right, so for, we're going to start off, uh, we're going to go through and introduce everybody. Uh, Lex, do you mind if we start with you and go down the line? Yeah, hey everybody, I'm, my name is Lex Lang and uh, I'm a voice actor. I play Suguru Gato in Jujutsu Kaisen and I've done over 450 other characters in my career. 450? So it's awesome to be here. And, uh, I'm really enjoying being a part of Jujutsu Kaisen. It is a really sick title and it's, it's so cool. The manga is amazing and uh, it's probably one of my favorites of all time, and I've been doing this a long time already, so, yeah, nice. it's cool. Great to be here, and thank you. And I am Kaylee McKee. I play Yuta Okotsu in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. You may have also heard me in Guilty Gear as Testament, Pina and Beastars, and a couple other places. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing Utah, and uh, here's hoping for potentially other things. Yeah. Not exactly able to talk about too much, but it's very cool to be here. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. We're still going to ask anyway. <laughs> yeah, we can very politely say thank you, but no thanks. <laughs> My name is Anaris Quinones. I am the voice of Rika in Jitsu Kaisen. <laughs> I voiced her as a little girl and her as a curse, which is really fun. Um, I also voiced Mirko in Minecraft Academia, <laughs> Nessa in Pokemon Twilight Wings, and ooh, uh, oh, I cannot in ReZero. I can't think of anyone else, but yeah, <laughs> Yellow Nubbit from a Taco Titan. There we go. So, <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started with the first question. So this question uh, is kind of across the board, but for you guys, uh, what was it like when you got the call to be on Jujutsu Kaisen? Because I know you guys came in at different times. I know for Lex, you, you were already doing the show, uh, but when you got the call for the movie, what was it like uh, versus, you know? Yeah, I, it was you, really, you already read the manga, so you, you were yeah, already a fan. Yeah, so too. I was already a fan, so when I got the call for the movie, it was just like, yes! You know, I was so excited because I got to see a little bit of Gato's history, you know, like his backstory. And to me, that's really important as an actor, you know. And uh, for the series, the director didn't really know a lot about the manga, and so he really didn't have a lot to give us in terms of direction towards like how the characters should be. But um, when it came to the, the movie, that was a, it was actually directed by a different voice director who had a lot of knowledge about the characters and about everything, so it was like really, it was awesome to be able to play that character with a lot more depth in the movie. And um, I'm literally looking forward to season two when that comes out. That's going to be cool. For those of you who follow the long yeah. it's Yeah, for me, uh, auditioning for Utah was one of those things where I just kind of like, oh, I really like this. I'm already a fan. I'm going to just not overthink it, just record it, shoot it out. Right, and then I just forgot about it. Um, and then I got the call that I had been cast, and I just sort of like 
for a moment, sat there, and I was like, oh, oh, wait, <laughs> oh, wow. Because <laughs> I, I already watched the anime, I already read some of the manga, and I was a fan, and I was like, this is really cool. What I didn't know was how big of a character Yuta was at the time until after they had cast me, uh, and especially when I had auditioned. So when I learned that, I, it was really fun to just be able to, to realize that I would have this breadth of a character, like this wide range of emotions to portray, and this story that I immediately felt was super compelling. And uh, it was very, very fun. Some would say the main character of that film. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah definitely. Was... Main character of the film, and then, yeah. you know, in the manga, he's also a uh, fan favorite. Mm -hmm. So he was originally cool. supposed to be the main character. Yeah, until they decided to focus on Yuji instead. Mm -hmm. So now we get two good boys. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and one bad. <laughs> Uh, for me, you know, I was cast around the same time as Kaylee, uh, so I was kind of a casual fan of Jujutsu. I knew that it was big, I knew that it was animated gorgeously, and I had read about Yuta and Rika, and I was like, oh, they sound so tragic, I like that, you know, just <laughs> love the torture um, going on, but, you know, I, I, I got the sides unexpectedly, I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do my best, and who knows what happens. Uh, and then I got cast, and you know my agent just called me up, and he's like, uh, "So you got cast as Rika?" I'm like, "Oh, really? Awesome!" <laughs> you know? And uh, I came in, I recorded. It's actually my first session uh, in LA after moving here, because I moved here in January, um, and it was really fun. It was just like uh, what a couple hours of just screaming, and then sweet little. <laughs> little girl talking and just talking about it all being a promise, Yuta, you know? So it was, it, it really meant a lot. It was really fun, you know? And getting to play off Kaylee was so much fun because I was the last one to record. So I heard Kaylee's performance and I was like, ah, yes, I have something to work off of, so. I was also really excited when I learned that you got Rika because we had just, in a different movie, just played the same character. <laughs> yeah, we, we were both in Sword Art Online. Um, the recent progressive movie, and I play one of the new main characters in that, Mito, and she plays my avatar, uh, who is just a scary, like, <laughs> So this scary was like a roles oh, reversed oh, almost. Yeah! <laughs> you know, it, and it's like a trend now that we're just playing opposite each other in yeah. anime movies. <laughs> you guys are going to be the new Richard Corbett's and Ricky Simons. <laughs> it's been really always fun. together. Uh -huh. um, so, you guys got the call, you got in there, uh, I was going to ask uh, you guys, to me, power couple of the century, uh, and you kind of already answered this, but, but what was it like uh, as, as voice actors to play with that dynamic? Because you got to record after she did, and... Yeah, I unfortunately didn't have any Anaris to listen to when I recorded, because Anaris recorded later. Um, but I, I also did know, like, Anaris' energy, like I said, from working with her in the past, and, uh, and I knew the kind of stuff that she may bring, although she still surprised me, she is fantastic, um, and so I did my best thinking about that to try and give those layups, you know, in my performance, to, and, uh, really to just connect with the characters themselves, because when you... When you are in the character and you feel like you're truly communicating in this world, you know, the, if the, the other actor will feel the same way and you guys will just fall into the world. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, I got to play off of you and that made my job very easy and, you know, on top of the animation, the music, everything that, you know, the movie brought to the table visually and I guess cinematically, it's like, oh, we had so much to play with, it was so easy to bring life to these characters and just be honest, so, you know, it was really cool working on Now, that. Lex, you were, as some shippers in this room might agree, part of another power couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see you guys. How was, how was that dynamic, because you, you, like you said, you got to dive a little bit more into this character, what was that like? Yeah, it was really nice to see, like, how deep 
the friendship went with Gojo and Gato. You know, it's just like a true bond, like from the beginning. And uh, that was cool. It was great to work with Keiji, too, because, um, you know, we've done a lot of stuff together, like in um, Megalobox. I don't know if anyone's seen that. Yes. Yeah. So he plays uh, Gearless Joe, and I play Yuri the Champ. So we've been, like, there as friends and enemies, and, you know, we've done a lot of work together in some other shows, too. So that was kind of cool to see. And he's, I think he's a fantastic actor. Like, he's really good at this part. And so I was able to play off him for some of the scenes. Um, he hadn't recorded everything by the time I recorded, but I, I did have a chance to hear some of what he was doing. And, uh, it, you know, it's always a super pleasure to do that with him. And um, to see how deep the friendship was, was also kind of enriching for the character itself. You know, I was able to like apply some of that to my performances. And so, yeah, it was very cool. I like seeing depth of friendships in stories like that, where, you know, you may not know it till the end, but you can kind of tell all the way through, if you watch it again, that they had this friendship going from the beginning. Yeah, so yeah, good question. Well, I want to say across the board, some of the best performances I've seen in a while. Like you guys killed it, knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Like there were some scenes where I was just like, that's her? Oh my god! <laughs> and, like, and like your snarkiness, I was like, oh my god, this is so good. Um, so good job there. We are going to open it up for a question or two, if you raise your hand now. Oh, you're There's fast. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so... Oh, oh. Uh, for the Stand up. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Um, do you have any tips on managing auditions in a day? Like, do you get a lot? And like, your, your process of going about, you know, so the question was, do we have any tips on how to manage doing a lot of auditions each day? That was the question. Um, well, usually you'll have your own home studio for the most part. Uh, you know, a little booth, even a closet that's got blankets in it, and you've got, you know, a microphone. You're, not the home. You're able to, like, isolate enough so there was not a lot of extra sound going on. So that's part one. But, um, you know, just prepare, just like any actor would do, you know, review the auditions, get your Pro Tools or whatever it is you have, Audacity or whatever it is running, um, and then just go in and have them ready. Like, I have a little, either an iPad or I have a screen in my booth, and so I can just have all of them accessible. I've got a mouse and a keyboard in the booth, too, so I can move things around. And so I just knock them off one at a time, and then I go back and I edit them and you know bounce them out and send them into wherever they need to be sent. You know, so I usually, if I have a lot of auditions, I'll make some extra time for it. I'll get up a little extra early to make sure I have time to do them before I have to go about like regular stuff. But auditioning is about ninety-eight percent of my work as as a voice actor. Like I'll audition for a hundred roles and maybe get two out of the hundred. And so at the end of the year, I'll say, "Why well, I, I auditioned for you know a thousand roles or twelve hundred roles, and you know I ended up getting fifteen or sixteen roles. And some of them are in series, so I'll do like twenty episodes of that particular character. But yeah, it's not it's not like a one every other role I get cast in. It's like there's a lot of auditions, and as an actor, you should be ready to just let go of the audition once you've auditioned and not be worried about, oh, did I get it? Did I get it? Did I get because when the people who are casting, they actually hear what they're looking for, and it, it locks in as like, that's the thing we were thinking of, then that's the person who gets cast. And then, it, it doesn't mean you did a bad job, it just means they locked in to the one that they were imagining for that character. So, um, yeah, you just gotta let go, and whatever happens comes back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, have water, <laughs> not cold water, room temperature, or warm. Um, as well as a nice tea, or I have even found recently that a black coffee, just a little bit, it's really good for mouth noise, to, yeah. so you don't have those pops, yeah. yeah. And um, obviously start with higher, softer characters in this list of characters you need to do first, and then if you need to do a bunch of shouting and, and ravage your throat, save that to the end of the night. Yeah. Um, you know, save, save your abilities. and uh, and. Just make sure you have enough time, and once you have your recording software open and you have the scripts pulled up, like, like him, I have a screen and a mouse and keyboard in my booth. Um, once you have those open, that is the, if, if you're finding it hard, you're like, I'm, I have so many to do today, I'm overwhelmed, am I even going to do any at all? 
just opening those and having them on the screen in your booth will make your brain feel like you've passed a big hurdle and it'll be so much easier to start and get them all done. Mm -hmm. And try to hit it all in one take. I think it's really easy to get in your head and the more you're in your head for each and every audition, the longer it's gonna take. And I know this from experience because I've done this in a lot of my auditions. But the better you are at cold reading and you know trusting your instincts um, and being able to evaluate the copy and like give what casting wants, but also what you want to bring to the character. Um, you know, the quicker the process is, and you know, I always organize things by deadline. You know, it's like, oh, whatever is due soonest. Okay, let me get it out of the way because I totally will just submit thirty minutes before it's due. Um, Same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, just stay on top of it. Um, you know, if you feel like your voice is getting tired or you're just feeling overwhelmed in general, because you know, I think acting is very much of a physically and mentally taxing thing. Um, just take a break and then get back to it and you know just keep having fun that's the number one thing i think she made a really good point also by saying don't don't try to think of what the casting person wants mm -hmm. just act and be the character how you would portray it because there's only one of you mm -hmm. period so you're your own unique magic you know you're your own superhero so you can just be you and you do that character how you would do it and you're going to bring the magic to that character as opposed to going, what do they want? What did it sound like before? And like trying to get to something. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good point. I look at a character and I say, what do, if I were watching this, what do I wish they sounded like? And can I do that? No. Oh, all right. Um, so I know you have a jujitsu question here. Yeah. So you're going to go with you next. Okay. Um, for the actors who had read the manga, um, what, knowing how your character changes later on after the events of the movie, does that affect your performance in any way? Ooh, spoilers. So she wants to know, uh, for those who couldn't hear her, uh, she wants to know that if you read the manga and you knew the direction your character was going to go, did this affect your performance in any way, shape, or form? So I purposefully leave myself a little ignorant. Um, I, have, I have jumped around the manga enough to know sort of that arc. Um, and I had people also tell me <laughs> between sessions, like, hey, you know this about this character, right? You know this, right? And I'm like, okay, cool, whoa. <laughs> um, did it affect how I portrayed him? I would say I knew that there was a place that I was working toward at the end of the film where he has grown a lot. And that happens even just within the film. Um, and within the, the zero volume manga. And so I did let that guide the, how I portrayed him. I kept him more, uh, more sad, more, more um, out of his depth, um, a little like, a little, like, like I made him sound a little bit like he had just been crying a lot. And then as the movie went on, I, I took that back a bit as you saw his growth. So in that sense, that did affect that. What about you, Lex? Well, I tried to kind of keep myself out of the spoiler zone. So when I would get to a point where like, oh, you know what, this is getting ahead of myself here. I'm not gonna look too far in the future. I'm gonna just go up to where this story is, you know? So yeah, after, after the movie and after season one, I got a little further into like what season two is about a little bit, but not too much even, just enough to get a feel for what's coming. Yeah, for me, I mean, Rika doesn't really have like a lot of development, I would say, you know, like she, she's someone who went through, you know, unspoken trauma and later became a curse. And her whole thing is just wanting to protect Yuta. Um, and so it's just recognizing, you know, I read the manga to be able to understand and recognize, okay, what, what is her relationship with Yuta? You know, how exactly does she feel? What is what might be informing like why she acts the way she does in curse form because at the end of the day she's still a little girl you know and i try not to forget that even in her curse form so you know definitely I, I always like to let the manga and the source material inform me because for me it's like oh another source of information so i can just kind of make an amalgamation of what i want to bring to the table so nice all right who has another jujitsu question hands up you, with the yellow, yes. Okay. 
All right, sister, what's your question? So the question is, how do you see yourself in your characters? Now, your character has like two forms. I was going to ask which one was your favorite, so you can tack that on if you want. Uh, Cursed Rico is probably my favorite to perform, um, just because I don't get to do that kind of yonder a monster noise very often, so it's like really fun. Um, but I also don't get to play, you know, little girls a lot, you know, coming from a place of innocence. Um, and I recognize Rika, especially in her human form, as just this little girl that was forced to grow up too fast. And I think I can resonate with that because, you know, when I was younger, I feel like I was way too mature for my age. And that came from a place of trauma. So I think I definitely resonate more with human Rika, but also Chris Rika is really fun to play. <laughs> So for me, I actually did lose a, a friend who was very close to me uh, when I was younger. And I also was having a really bad time at the high school that I was at. And I transferred to a new high school where uh, I met new friends and they helped me uh, sort of deal with the hardships that I was having and, and uh, grow as a person. And that's exactly what happens with Utah. So it was really cool to be able to explore some of the feelings that I have about my own life within this character, and it was very fulfilling. Lex, how did you relate to this villain? Let me, let me hear the Lex thing. Well, you know, people have called him a villain a lot, and really, the, he's not so much a villain, but he, he's more wounded. He's like a human that has some wounds. And so that makes him imperfect. You know, he had this ideology where he really wanted to protect all non-curse users and he really wanted to be like, stand behind and really protect. But then that was destroyed. And so he had this wound that sort of happened. And so I think in my own personal life, I, I, I understand how it is to I have an ideology about something where like you really believe in it strongly and then that gets crushed. And so then you have to take on a new perspective. And so I think for Suguru, you know, he, he had to like adapt. And, you know, the only way he knew how to do it was through using curses for his own benefit and then eventually deciding that curse users were, and sorcerers were li literally all that really deserved to be around still. And that's why, you know, I hate monkeys and all that. Uh, you know. <laughs> Sorry, monkeys out there. Um, so that was one of the main things that I related to was that, you know, he was just human and he had his own flaws. And that's what I tried to bring to the character is like a human, something that still had heart. I was never playing it as like a villain, like, oh, I need to be a villain now, you know. It was more just like, you know what, I have this deeper wound that is just showing itself as part of this dialogue. And we got to see a lot of that depth in this movie and I thought that was amazing. There was one scene where I was like, I really wish you had got the chance to voice that scene. And it's the scene where he finds the, the little girls, the little curse users, yeah. and out in the sticks where they're treating them like witches and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this would be such a good like monologue right here scene. But you may get to see that yeah. soon. Oh, oh, oh. No spoilers, but <laughs> that might be coming around the corner. Because that scene, I was like, visually beautiful, and I was like, I just need, I need that monologue right here, right yeah. now, let's go. Um, any other jujitsu questions? Pink. Sorry. So, which character was it? Mahito? So, for Mahito, uh, he had mixed feelings about uh, everything. How did you guys feel about his character? Hmm. I'm, you know, I don't have any really strong opinions about Mahito. And I don't, I don't mean that because I don't you know, like the character or anything, but um, just because when we're doing this work, usually we're really focusing on what our character is about, and when we're watching the movies, we're just like going along for the ride, just like you are when we're watching the shows. So we're not like evaluating, like, what do I feel about this character right now as they're saying their, you know, whatever they may be saying. So for me, I, I'm just taking the ride like you guys, and you know, I think it's a good character, um, but I didn't have any real strong opinions on the character as an actor. Yeah, I, honestly, pretty similar. Um, I a lot of my opinions or, or like 
vibes from characters I feel like are still developing as, you know, I've watched through season one, we've done the movie, uh, waiting for season two, like as, as I, how anime arcs tend to go, you know, season one is like introductory and then, you know, it moves into the depths, the, re the really core of characters and I'm waiting for those to, to um, interact with each other in new arcs and stuff for me to really like set up a tier list or like or like really form strong uh, opinions about a lot of the characters. Well, see, that's how I was going to twist the question. I was like, how about we just who's your favorite? Because mine is my best friendo. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's favorite that I don't play? Is that what you I don't think play? Yes, is, yes. is a, qu a good question to answer. Hmm. You know. I might, you might want to come back to me on it. All right. I, you know what? I will say, just because of KG's performance, I will say I don't want to call one a my full favorite. Yeah. But I really, really love Gojo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like Gojo too. It's really good. <laughs> and those eyes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> those eyes. Who's this pretty guy? He's, he's yeah. dreamy. <laughs> Um, you know, I am just a huge fan of tragic characters, like Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2 is like my favorite, you know, and that's just because I, lo I love my sad characters. Thus, Yuta is automatically my favorite. <laughs> As it should be. So <laughs> <laughs> um, who else has a question? Do, 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 do. Way, way in the back. So for each of your characters, who do you think has the best, what, or what is your, your most famous line or your, your best line? And if you're comfortable, I hate asking voice actors to do this on the panel, but if you want to do the line, you can. Um, but what, it, what is probably like maybe your favorite line or like maybe your tagline? Well, I always got a kick out of, I hate monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> that was always good. Let, it, let us curse each other until the death. That was oh, yeah. Yeah. That whole declaration of war scene was like, ooh, shivers, let's go. <laughs> For Utah, his most well-known line, I I think, is probably it's it's very tragic and sad line, but also like shows a feeling of like I want to improve and and that's the uh, I want to know that it's okay that I'm still alive. line she has, and I can't remember the exact wording, but, you know, she's, it's when she first shows up in the movie, and she's all like, hey, I'm here to, you know, to mess, mess you up, curse, and she, she gets some blood on her, and she's like, oh, I look so, so pretty! <laughs> I love that scene. I also played a lot of the curses in the movie, so it's like, who are you? <laughs> Bonus. That was nice. Yeah. All right. Who else has a question? Raise your hand. Da -da -da. I'm gonna do white sleeve checkered pattern. I don't know what that is on your sleeve. It looks cool. It's just a flip over. Nice. There we go. Nice. nice. Let's say you could control it, you could become the I creature. Can I control it? Maybe skip a line at Starbucks. And... I mean, see if I, that's just toxic. Like, I can't, I, can't, I can't encourage that. I have to keep it sealed away. It would be hard to have it only for a day because I wouldn't want to actually harm people, but I would use that power and the, sh the pressure of it, uh, the intimidation factor of it, to help protect people. But I don't know where I would go in a day to find the people in need. But that's what it, my first instinct would be, would Superhero. be to protect people. Yeah. Lex? 
I would probably just collect some curses. <laughs> and hang out with some friends, relax, enjoy a nice meal. Kill some monkeys. <laughs> I would be protecting people. Yes, you would. Yeah, <laughs> if, if I had your powers, Lex, I'd be like a Pokemon master. I'd be like, I gotta go catch them all, all the curses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to collect all the different ones. You do too good. Like a thousand of them already. My favorite type of character is the summoner that has all of the different things. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. awesome. Final Fantasy. We'll play with some curses here. All right. Next question, raise your hand. Okay. Yeah, you Yeah? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the movie's done, and now you're waiting for season two to come back. When it does come around, how do you, how would you go, go about getting back into these two characters, having already done some of the other projects? I plead the fifth. So, so the question was for everybody, uh, with season two coming back, uh, how are you going to get back into your characters after doing the movie, which obviously takes place before, and they're kind of slightly different characters at that point in time. Um, and I guess, yeah, you can't all, all answer this because NDA contracts. If Rika and I come back, then we may or may not be not allowed to say if we are or not. <laughs> I guess like, like, like after life, I Generally, just care about going back into it. Yeah, getting back into character, you mean? Yeah. Got you. Um, it depends where, like, where I'll be, you know, like, I find that a lot of the reason why I was able to do Rika was because I had previously done a role that was similar, where I was playing, like, this ghost spirit girl who had a higher voice, and she, her monster voice was deeper, but I got to play with that before. And I find that, you know, every time I have the experience of playing these different characters, they each kind of inform each other. It's like a one for all, kind of, in that way. <laughs> so, you know, depending on where I am, it's like, oh, I'll probably be even better at doing the monster voice, hopefully. Who knows? But, um, but yeah. And Lex, you're probably going to be in season two, huh? Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> generally, as a, as a voice actor, when you're getting ready to come back for something that's you know, reprising a role or whatever. There's a few things that come into play. One is, if it's the voice you're trying to remember, like, God, I did this over a year ago, what was my character even like? Well, when you get there, they're gonna play you some samples of what you were doing already so you can get back into the voice. As an actor, I tend to watch, let's say, one episode of season one and the movie again. Like, that's what I would personally do, just to kind of get back into the groove of it, listen to it, really kind of hone in on it a little bit. But the third thing is, the director, is an integral part of our performance. They're, they're not often credited for it, but they're always a big part of it because they know the story, they know the storyline of every character, they know the, the past and what's coming for the character. So they're able to like really guide us into that channel where we can just act and, and be present for whatever's happening emotionally for the character. So that's how I, I tend to approach coming back to a part. You know, those, those three elements are really important. Yeah, uh, for, for other characters that I've come back for, um, I've been really grateful when a director will say, like, they'll, they'll let me listen to something from early, and then they'll let me listen to something that was later, right? And then they'll say, like, this is how they grew, and now we find ourselves, this is the growth the character has done in between that time, and here's the growth that they will be doing. So now you, and then I know kind of where to place myself and uh, get into, you know, put myself in the timeline, in the character's shoes, what, you know, where they are in their, you know, maturity of their character arc, and uh, it helps a lot. The, really, the director, and sometimes they'll have, um, if, it's, if it's not a, you know, from Japan, like an anime, or even sometimes with anime, they'll have a writer uh, and the, that may help guide you through as well, and, and uh, really help you come back into it and bring back that energy that you had before in a new way. And when we're doing anime, it, anime is just original animation in Japan that's brought out here. Mm -hmm. the, there's a translation, and then from that translation, there's what's called an English adaptation writer who writes, who rewrites it so that it matches all the flaps. But what we generally also get to do is we get to preview before we do our line in English, we get to see what the Japanese actor did. 
And it's not to copy them, but it's to see what the emotional quality that they were having, what the emotional content of their performance was. So then we can apply that to our performance, but not to like mimic, but more just to go like, you know what, they're deeply disturbed here, they're very sad, they're, 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 they're being, you know, they're looking down their nose in this line, like you can really sense it in the emotions. So then we can apply that to our performance. If the writing's good, we get the emotional content good, then we can just do our acting and it comes to life. All right, so we've got about five more minutes before they start to yell at me. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, uh, tell people where they can find you online and obviously here at the convention, um, and yeah, plug your stuff. Or what's coming up that you can talk about as well. Uh, well, you can usually find me on Twitter. That is where I am simping over funny bays and such. Uh, <laughs> and it's my first name, underscore Q. Uh, and I'm also on Instagram, and I got a website, and there's Q.com. And here at the con, I'm just gonna, well, I'm probably gonna take a break after this because I've been signing all morning. But then afterwards, I am gonna be back over at the autograph hall, and I will be next to Kaylee. So please come by to say hello. Um, and what's coming up that I can talk about? I don't know. <laughs> but there's it's always something. Yeah, it's like maybe there is something I can announce, but I don't know. But either way, I'm always working on something, so please stay tuned. Uh, for me, you can find me online, uh, Gaspy, G-H-A-S-P-E-Y-V-O on Twitter and Instagram, as well as Gatsby on Twitch. I've been moving, so I haven't been streaming, but that will pick back up. And uh, one thing that I can talk about that was a recent announcement, uh, if you uh, like Sherlock Holmes and you like anime, you should watch Moriarty the Patriot. Um, I play Charles Milverton in that, it was very fun to do. And uh, yeah, I will be in the signing hall. My table's next to Anaris, and Lex is sort of on the corner. Yep, off the corner there. And uh, we will be back after eating some lunch and before our next panel that we have together later today. Yeah. Thank you for uh, having me. Awesome. And for me, it's uh, at Lex Lang, which is just my name, uh, on Instagram and Twitter, and Lex Lang TikTok, if, you, if you're on TikTok at all. And uh, you can hear me on Toonami right now as Gorman Ishikawa in Loop on the Third, which is uh, kind of late night. And um, if you play games, of, of course you got Dr. Neo Cortex here. Um, and uh, a bunch of other stuff coming up. You know, it's funny because we are signed to NDAs like immediately. They, it's like the first thing we sign when we walk into a job. And so it's not for months sometimes that we can actually talk about it. But there's lots of stuff in the works and I'm sure you guys will be real happy when you see what's coming. Nice. And we are upstairs. If you want to go upstairs where the autograph area is, you don't have to buy an autograph. You can come and just say hi, ask questions, talk, or whatever, that's fine. And if you come in, like, you know, they've got a few of the Naruto people. A lot of us are here from Naruto, but a couple of them, like, there's some long lines. And don't feel, like, feel like you can just peek in. If there's nobody, not a big line at our tables, just come on up and feel free to talk to us. We're happy to do it. You can always get autographs, too, but, yeah, just feel free to come and say hi, because that's why we're here, just to interact with you guys. Nice. Uh, and I've been Jeremy DeChan, Jeremy TV Online, and I am, thank you. Uh, There's your applause. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I'm actually going to a panel right after this uh, for intro to voice acting. Um, so that'll be in the room next door if you have voice oh, acting questions. Yeah. I, Lex, I think you know somebody on that panel. I know, I do. <laughs> My wife, Sandy Fox, she plays Chibi Yusa and Sailor Moon, and she plays all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we've been together for 26 years. <laughs> it's been a long time. So come say hi to both of us sometime today. Yay. And you guys are awesome, by the way. Thanks for waiting yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good. Yeah. Woo. We love you. We really do. Thank you for having us. Thank you.